This morning, I got an interesting comment from one of my YouTube followers, and I thought I'd share it with you because I, when we dive into some of the particulars when it comes to the dating marketplace and the dating, mating, and relating process, I think we get a better understanding of who's really, who is really desirous of a significant relationship and who's in it for just the fun. So let's lean into this for a second. I want to share with you what someone just wrote me a few minutes ago. And they said, people can date just for fun. And it's okay as long as they don't say things that will lead the other party to think you want commitment when you don't. If people could be more honest, even in the dating apps, haha, as if there would be less misunderstanding. It occurs to me that if, um, and, and so as I was leaning into this for a moment, it occurs to me that if men were absolutely straightforward on their dating profiles, all I want is just sex, a good time and sex, how many men will actually get how many men will actually receive that? Now, I know there's this belief that, for example, Tinder is the hookup place. But the reality is, is these days, men and women buy into this uh, narrative that what I call relationship talk. And what I mean to say is, I think it's a unspoken rule between men and women that if a man says he wants a relationship, a woman will believe him, and then they'll engage in a short-lived encounter in many cases where there is some romance and some sex, and yet no real commitment, no real relationship is de developed from that. Think about that for a moment. If men were absolutely honest, like what this woman has, has suggested, how likely is a person going to want to engage in just an exploration of fun? Yes, there is the small percentage of women that are just simply in it for hookups as well. But the reality is, is our current dating marketplace is based on the idea of the exploration of a relationship. An exploration of a relationship. At least that's the hidden promise that's supposed to happen between two people. The problem with this unspoken um, dynamic is it ends up leading a lot of people down the wrong path. And by the way, I do believe men, I, I do believe most men are good guys. They're just bad daters. But more importantly, I do believe most men are good guys. They're just lying to themselves when it comes to what do they really want in a significant relationship? What do they really want? I'm referring to What do they want? in this process. Listen, folks, if you follow my channel, I particularly focus on those who only want partnership out of this dating uh, process, out of this dating, mating, relating process through the dating marketplace, uh, only those who genuinely want partnership with another person. And to me, partnership is most likely, not always, either living together or getting married. That's, that's my belief. That's my conversation. My conversation isn't centered around how to meet, you know, how to have a short-lived experience, a situationship, a casual relationship, a friends with benefits. And my job is to point out those who only seek those types of relationship, particularly the men. Let me, let me repeat this. My coaching, my whole channel is centered on how to determine which guy is genuinely desirous of partnership versus all the others that are in it for a short term? Um, they're in it for a short term mating process, not a long term mating process. In fact, uh, if you need some support with that, check out the link below to a free discovery call this, with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. So I want to lean into how does a man demonstrate really demonstrate he loves you. He really loves you. And he's demonstrating his ways to show love. Well, going back to this original comment, I want you to think of this. How many men and women say the words, I love you to each other, but it's not a real commitment to one another? That's right. How many men show them say how many men and women will say the words I love you to each other, but it doesn't demonstrate a real commitment to one another. 
I get women asking me all the time, Jonathan, I'm with a great guy, but I want more commitment out of him. I'm like, great. What does that look like for you? But Jonathan, I want more commitment out of him. I'm like, great. What does that look like for you? Jonathan, I want more commitment out of my guy. Great. What does that look like for you? First, ladies, you have to determine what does commitment look like for you? Now, if you follow my channel, you know, I have my rhetoric. Um, it's always at least in the big in the fairly early stage of dating. Once I once two people decide that they want to be monogamous and exclusive with one another. I'm repeat that monogamous and exclusive. I and mean, you might think they're the two same things. No, monogamy basically says I'm only sleeping with one person at a time. Exclusivity means I won't be actively seeking other people at the same time. In other words, I won't actively be on the apps looking for somebody else. That's exclusivity. Monogamy is I'm just going to sleep with one person at a time. So when two people agree to um, monogamy and exclusivity, mainly calling each other boyfriend and girlfriend, the standard I would invite you all to have is the following, that we spend two, three, four days and nights a week together doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal and professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. Now, you might, some of you might be going, but Jonathan, I'm in a long distance relationship. We can't see each other that often. Folks, Proximity breeds continuity. Proximity breeds continuity. And what continuity means is continuous. Just like the roots to a tree, the more the, more the roots continue to grow through proximity, the stronger the, the, the tree is, okay? So proximity breeds continuity and continuity leads to long-term commitment. Yes, there's exceptions to the rule. I know some of you think even in my relationship, it was long distance. In our relationship, we spent a significant amount of time together. Significant. In fact, in a 90-day period, we spent close to 40 days together. That's more than most people spend when they actually live in the same town. Okay. So coming back to the idea of demonstrating love, one of the most important things, when people say, I love you to each other, in my opinion, that should be kind of the agreement that we're going to really explore long-term commitment with one another. And yet people like this woman who wrote, ah, dating should just be fun, and saying I love you should just be for fun, okay? No. I believe when you get to that point of saying you genuinely love each other, there should be not, there shouldn't be a, a there should be a not just implied conversation of commitment, but an actual plan for long-term commitment with one another. So how do you know the guys who really mean I love you for the long run? Because ultimately, when you say I love you to each other, isn't just I enjoy the good times with you. I think it also should mean I'm going to be there for you during the bad times, through the tough times. Maybe you're sick. I'm going to be there for you. I want to take care of you, not just financially take care of you, because I, I recognize that it's not about the financial piece, but it's the emotionally take care of you, spiritually take care of you, um, physically take care of you. That's what real, I think if you get to that point, so I'm going to share with you those six ways a man shows I love you. And I'm going to dive into this. So I'm going to say it out loud really quickly. When a person says, I love you, this is how I believe it should mean. I'm here. You matter. We are important. I've got your back. I'm not going anywhere. And I only want you. So I'm here means I'm present to this relationship. My mind isn't wandering elsewhere. I'm not going to let uh, all the other important things in my life to take away from my being present to our relationship. I'm present to this relationship. That's what I'm here means. You matter. That means you and I are on equal footing to one another. 
It's not a one up, one down type relationship. We're on equal footing with one another. Your feelings matter to me. Your best interests matter to me. You matter to me. Think about that. Isn't trust really the, you know, we oftentimes think of trust centered around fidelity, but I really do believe when you trust someone is when they, they say you matter to me. That I'm not beneath you. It's not all about, it's not doing it my way or the highway. And I know jokingly, I will say, but Jonathan, I'm just supposed to sit in my feminine energy and let him do all the work. Folks, a real healthy relationship is a two-lane street, a two-lane street. You're both equally investing in one another. By the way, it's a gorgeous sunrise behind me. All right. You matter. We are important. We are important. That means the relationship is a separate entity. There's a you, there's a me, then there's a collective we, which means I'm investing in the growth of this relationship. Have you experienced that? Have you experienced a co-creative relationship? What I mean by co-creative, it's two people mutually investing in one another. That is the kind of relationship that builds the deep roots that can sustain the tough times. I'm here. You matter. We're important. I've got your back. I've got your back. Did you ever see the movie Blindside? It was a, I think there was a line in the movie that says, I've got your back. That means I'm protective of you. I'm protective of you. Not just in the financial sense, I'm there. I've got your back emotionally. I've got your back physically. I've got your back spiritually, meaning I'm being protective of you. I'm not going anywhere. Look, at, I'm fully committed to this relationship. I don't want to leave. I want this to, to go deeper. I want this to go deeper. Think about that. What does deeper mean? Deeper means is the, is the building of that trust with one another. You know, these days people say, I love you so cavalierly. And the hard part is for many women in particular, they see that as a long-term commitment with each other. Isn't it sad? Because we've become such a disposable society. We become a group that just basically says, I'm in it for just the fun. Like this woman suggests. No, in my opinion, dating is for a purpose. The purpose of dating is to vet the other person to determine if it's worth exploring a relationship with them. And a relationship is a vetting process to decide if this is someone worth investing long term with one another, because the long term does require at some point to take care of one another. If you're in it for the short run, the fun, I want you to think about that for those of us in midlife. You know, at some point we're going to age, we're going to need help from the other person physically. But Jonathan, I don't want to be a nurse or a purse. That's part of the, the bargain that you make with another person. Sure, you might want to have some longevity with a person before that happens. But saying, um, saying, being in a fully committed relationship is saying, I want to take care of you. And the last, and I think this is just as equally important as all the other is. So I just want to repeat, I'm here. You matter. We are important. I've got your back. I'm not going anywhere. And I only want you. In other words, you are the person I only want to make love to, that I want to be sexually intimate with you. I'm not going to be fantasizing about other people. I'm not going to uh, go off on watch porn to get my excitement. You are the excitement for me. You bring me that level of excitement and desire and pleasure. As we age, that doesn't happen as frequently as it when we're younger. But ultimately, they're not on the dating app swiping, you know, for someone else. I know people that will say, I love you, and they're on the dating app in the early stage of dating, and they'll say they'll be swiping elsewhere. 
genuine love is that when you're really genuinely in love with someone and you say the words, I love you, I'm going to repeat myself one more time. This is how it should feel. I'm here. You matter. We're important. I've got your back. I'm not going anywhere. And I only want you. Have you experienced this in your life? Are you experiencing it now? Have it seemed like some men say the words, but they don't have the actions behind it? Ladies, it's incumbent upon you because you're making these decisions for yourself. And if you buy into the narrative that chemistry equals relationship success, you might find yourself in a situation where you're attached to another person who isn't truly desirous of long-term commitment, who isn't really desirous of something deeper. And let me just say this, there are lots of men that are genuinely desirous of a significant relationship. Now, when I say the word lots, it might be a small percent. I mean, it might be 20% of the population that's actively in the dating marketplace. It's not, it's not over 50%. Most, 50, most 80% are operating the way this woman suggested. Let's just have fun dating. If dating is all about fun, then you could be setting yourself for only those short, fun is a short-term mating strategy. Being intentional is a long-term mating strategy. And that's what I teach when you work with me to help you gain footing on who are the men who are genuinely interested from a long-term mating strategy versus the short-term mating strategy. Is this making sense? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. If you find value in this, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you're brand new. Check out the links below to a free discovery call with me to see if working with the coach is right for you. Follow me on Instagram or even join my group called Midlife Love Master. It's all listed below. Oh, I saw the bird just fly by. All right, I think this is a great place to wrap up this video. Please let me know if it resonated with you. Please let me know if it had value for you. And I'm going to wrap up my video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye now.